power, more power. I'm always looking for ways to simplify the electrical system in my trailer because I hate messing with this stuff. I really do. I just want to plug things in and have them work. A while back, I received this Blue Eddy AC200P for review. And today I'm going to hardwire this into my trailer's electrical system. Now this video is not sponsored by Blue Eddy. This is just being done on my own time. But I want to show you how you can hardwire this in and even talk to you about hardwiring in a regular portable power station into your vehicle's uh, electrical system. Well, currently the power comes in from the solar panels through the roof here, and it runs down to this Renogy controller here, and then on down to a permanently installed house battery down here. I've never had an inverter installed in the trailer, but there are many things that run off of 110, such as my laptop, and then I end up plugging an inverter into the cigarette lighter in here and running it onto the laptop. Other things too, like uh, power tools, or how about uh, an induction cooktop, uh, things that, um, an Instapot, things that we want to run off of 110. So that's what we're up to today is kind of simplifying things and making things better all at the same time. So this Blue Eddy is a capable unit. It's, uh, it's got, you know, I did the review on it. You can watch that, but I like it and it'll handle big loads. With its 110 volts capable of 2,000 watts, 4,000 watt peak, it'll handle over 2,000 watts for a couple of minutes, you know, like 2,200 watts. So it's very resilient. But it has a feature on it that most power stations don't have. Now, most power stations have a, a 12 volt accessory outlet here that's good for 10 amps. And then a lot of them have these. 5.5 millimeter uh, barrel plug, barrel plugs here. And on some of them, those are good for five amps or 10 amps. This one's only good for three amps down here. Why? Because over here is a 25 amp 12 volt outlet. Now this one is designed to hook directly into your RV's electrical system. There are only two units on the market that I'm personally aware of, there may be others, and that's the Blue Eddy AC200P and the Blue Eddy um, 200 Max that have an accessory outlet like this one that has more than 10 amps. Now this one has 25 amps and I think the AC Max has 35 amps. Now that makes it possible to wire this into your RV's electrical system and run your refrigeration, your onboard furnace. This will run the blower and fire that up and it'll handle all of that. This is a nice feature. One of the nicest things is it uses an aviation plug that goes in and locks in. So it can't pull out like that. It locks in until you lift, pull the ring towards you to undo it. That means when you're driving down the road, it's not going to come loose. And the same thing with the solar power that goes into this uh, AC200P, it locks in also. Now this cord here I had to order separately from Blue Eddy, and it came uh, within about a week I had it. So it's got that aviation plug on this side that goes into the uh, unit itself. It's got an XB60 plug in the middle. And then over on this end, it's got Anderson connectors. And I'll show you what I'm going to do to get this hooked up. Because what I want to do is go directly into my RV's power system right here before this circuit breaker. So from here, it goes up to the bus bar. And from there, it goes on to everything else in my trailer. And my trailer doesn't have much, but yours probably does. Now these panels have always been hooked up in parallel up until now, but the Blue Eddy AC200P needs 35 volts minimum for charging. And right now it's only getting about 20 volts max with these hooked up in parallel. So the first thing I need to do is hook these up in series, which is a simple matter of disconnecting the MC4 connectors and plugging them in differently. It only takes a couple minutes. Well, normally I put in my aluminum struts, but I'm only going to have this open for a minute here. 
Okay, I've done that. Now I can just finish up down below. That's going to be a little more involved. But the first thing I need to do is remove all the rest of this stuff, the controller and the in-house battery. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that because it's going to simplify things and give me some added bonuses at the same time, like a built-in inverter. So let's get started. Okay, that literally only took about 15 minutes to pull these things out. Well, that was the easy part. Now I got to deal with the wiring. I made a mistake. I should have never started this. Because now I have to paint behind this panel. Man, this is good quality 3M electrical tape, tape. And man, this stuff sticks. I'm just trying to get this apart. One nice thing about having the power station out here is I got somewhere to plug in my tools. I'm just unsoldering some old wiring connections here. Remodeling. It always entails a lot more work than you think it's going to be. <laughs> I'll show you what I've done so far. First of all, up here, I, I removed this boom box circuit breaker because I just don't need it. But what I did is I came down here and installed a DC breaker right here. Two pole DC breaker because there's always going to be changes and that lets me make the changes from here on down. Now that's a 50 amp. I didn't need to use a 50 amp, but the reason I bought one that big is because I'm using this as a switch and not as a breaker. So to handle the arcing of turning off and turning on again, I went ahead with DC. I went ahead with a larger breaker to handle that. There is of course a inline fuse up on the roof that handles the solar panels. So they're covered that way. Okay, this cable came with the AC200P. This is the inlet. This is uh, for power coming in. And once again, it's an aviation plug that does that so it can't come out. Now what hooks into this? This also came with the Blue Eddy. It has the other, um, X, it's not an XT60, it's a XT90 or something. This is bigger. But, and then that on the other end is uh, MC4 connectors. And that's why coming down off the roof here, I ended in MC4 connectors. So now I can hook the power into the Blue Eddy. Well, it's currently cloudy and it's raining, but it shows I've got just uh, 31 volts coming in, uh, one amp, uh, about 30 watts. So it's taken that, even though it needs about 35 volts to really charge, but I got something coming in right now anyway. So power's coming in. Now we've got to hook up the DC output and go into the trailer's wiring. Okay, to make that connection, this is the part that I had to buy from Blue Eddy. I had to special order it. They, it's just a, I, I don't know what it cost. It was like 20 bucks, 19 something plus shipping. Anyways, this is the side that plugs into the front of the AC200P, like that. And then on the other end, in the middle, it has an HT60. And then on the other end, it's got Anderson plugs here, or SAEs. I'm going to cut this off. And then I'm going to wire it into the fuse right here. And this wire goes on to the positive bus up here. And then I'm also going to run the other side, the negative side, over to my negative bus. That's it. Well, here's some of the wiring that got ripped out of here. Well, it's done. Although done isn't the right word because nothing's ever done in this trailer. I'm sure I'll be ripping that out of here in the future and doing something totally different. But it's done for now and it's, let me just summarize and show you what I did. First of all, I took out the circuit breaker that I had up there along on the roof line. And then coming down here, I installed the double pole breaker right down here. From there, I went to MC4 connectors and that's where the AC200, AC200P starts. And from there, it just came down and the wire comes around and just goes into the inlet down here on the AC200P. That's the solar coming in directly with no controller in line. 
because, of course, these power stations all have uh, MPPT controllers within them. They don't need it. Then from here, I got power coming out. This is the connector that I bought extra from Blue Eddy. And that wire comes over. I left it long so I can move this power unit out of here. That came over here. And the power went up to here to the uh, this 30 amp breaker. And the negative went over here and went to the negative bus. So the power goes from the breaker to the positive bus and the negative came over and went to the negative bus. And from there it goes into my trailer wiring, lights, fan, uh, refrigerators hardwired into here. So it's all set to go. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned using regular power stations like this Blue Eddy here, also to hook into your RV or your trailer, your van. So let's talk about that for a minute. It's, it's a lot the same. There are differences and things you need to take into consideration. So what have we got to work with here? First of all, you can charge this off a single 100 watt solar panel on your roof or a portable panel. But to get the power out, the only thing you have to use is this cigarette lighter accessory port here and these two barrel plug connectors over here. These are rated at 10 amps. And I think that's 10 amps combined. This is rated at 10 amps. Now, if it were me, what I would do, I would just accept 10 amps out of this and I would hook this directly into my bus bars, exactly like I showed you earlier in the video. But you're gonna to need to use a cigarette lighter plug like this to do it. Now, the problem with using a cigarette lighter plug is if you're running a refrigerator off this, this could jiggle out as you're driving. Most people don't know it, but there is, uh, you, you can turn and lock it in here. It says on, right on it, they all say lock or lock point. And what that means is you can plug it in and, and turn it and you'll hear it click into a detent. That doesn't hold it totally, but it does hold it more securely so it can't jiggle out as easily. Another thing I would do is I would use a plug like this that has the fuse in it. You can buy these at the auto parts store. And I would stick a, oh, a 15 amp fuse in the end here. See there? That way at least your system is protected. Of course, you got to figure out which is, I, I wired this one to do exactly what we're talking about. I don't remember when, but it was a while ago. And you can see on the ends here, I got it marked plus and minus. So this was to hook it up to my bus bar. So you could have one of these and just hook it up exactly like I hooked up this big blue eddy underneath it. Directly into your bus bar. That way you've got an inverter, you've got uh, phone charging ports over here, you got a light on the front. You got pretty much everything you need. Run your power into here. I like rooftop mounted panels that I don't have to deploy every time I stop. They're just, no matter where I am, they're always putting out power, power as long as there's some light in the sky. But if all you have is portable panels, well, that works too. But anyways, that's how you get it wired into your system. One thing you need to take into consideration is if you already have a house battery installed in your RV. Let's say that battery is dead and you hook this up to it, then the power from this is gonna to try to charge that battery. So that's something you need to think about and it's beyond the scope of this video. But the purpose here was to show you how you can run your cargo trailer or whatever off of just a power station and not have another battery involved. It sure simplifies things and you have everything you need just in one unit. Well, that's it for this video. Feel free to ask questions. I'm not sure I have any answers, <laughs> but uh, I'll try. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, you know the drill, like, share, and subscribe. I always say that, but we really do need you to subscribe. And uh, giving it a thumbs up really helps uh, the algorithms in YouTube also to promote the video. We'd appreciate it if you do both and leave a comment. Hey, we'll see you around. Oh yeah, I still have to paint that.